everybody? It's your girl, Morgan Alexis, entering the building. What up, what up? It's your boy, A. Shaw, the funky walker, dirty talker, none illin' and that man, Scruffzilla Gray's killing it in a million ways. I like that. I like that. How you doing today, big bro? I'm good. I'm good. A little, little oh, cold out, but you know, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. We're going to get into that, but I know we just went over it because y'all, we had some technical difficulties, but we're getting back yeah. to it. <laughs> um, how was your week? You know, how'd it go? Uh, it was cool. Uh, like, like I was saying, it was, uh, it was a, a difficult week beforehand, you know, just for the fact that, you know, the weather had did its dramatic change and a lot of people called off from work. Um, and, you know, the management was expecting a lot of miracles and whatnot. They was expecting us to walk on water, mm-hmm. you know, 5,000 with one fish. You know, they, they <laughs> was expecting that. And while, while that's in my bloodline and in my lineage and whatnot, I'm not exactly the person they were looking for. Mm. But I still got a few things accomplished just the same. So, um, that all of that happened. And, you know, it was, it, it was stressful. But, uh. One thing that uh, one thing that was cool that came from it, like a, a couple hours before I actually left for the weekend, left work for the weekend, um, they actually granted me, uh, they approved of my vacation that I had set up a couple weeks before. Um, it was about it was about two and a half weeks before I had requested it, and uh, they you know they they approved it and was like, hey, so uh, are you sure? you want to go on vacation at this time oh, like right now right now right now right now <laughs> it was one of those things mm. so but yeah no I, I i got the vacation and they tried to talk me right out of it and it was mm. just like mm, no nah, i did what i was supposed to do right y'all supposed to approve it after i did what i was supposed to do at the time that i was supposed to do it in right so did that that uh that uh totally led to the cool ass vacation slash Valentine's Day weekend Woo-woo. and week. <laughs> so I'm over here with Sarah Boo and we, you know, we've been cozy and chilling and whatnot. So yeah, it's been it's been cool. And we got our we got our son in there too. So if you hear, if you happen to hear um some wild toddler noises, it's because she's got a wild toddler in there. He's a cool kid though. It's all good, you know. We real, we real people in these streets, you know. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> How was your week? Uh, my week was good. What did I do? Did I do anything? Uh, uh-uh, there you go. <laughs> what I do? Did I do anything? Ooh. You know I gotta be extra. You know I gotta. Be I extra. see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, did I do anything interesting? No, Aaron. You know I don't have no life. Don't nothing be happening in my what? life. You wait, you didn't you and you and you and the chef didn't do nothing for Valentine's Day. I mean, we did like, yeah, we. I mean, we we cuddled and watched movies and ate. You know, I cooked a little something, something, and okay. you know, we did we did we did that at home thing because you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be out in negative zero type of you know, you know. Oh, I told you for that. That that me that doesn't mix with my melanin, so I just I can't get into <laughs> it. I can't do it. I can't do it, bro. But <laughs> I feel that. But yeah, no, it was, it was nice. It was nice and relaxing. And then, um, what else? Did anything happen last week that's interesting? No, not really. Just been, just living life, going to work, trying to get this money. You know, um, I, I, don't, I don't know if um, I updated you, but I've been going to voice lessons, and my voice I had a breakthrough with my voice lessons last week. So hey. feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty hey. good. I'm working on getting my. Um, pop voice to come out more because oh, yeah? I kind of grew up in a very structured when it comes to singing I grew up in a very structured like gospel word slash like choral singing type of upbringing so <laughs> so my voice tends to just to steer on that side of things and not really the pop like sound if that makes mm-hmm. sense this is all like singing makes perfect it's sense like, this is like musical nerd shit, so I'm not gonna talk to you about this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so now we're we're getting to the pop sound, and I had like a good little breakthrough with that last week, so I'm very happy about that. Um, That's so, good. That's good. You know, hopefully, that'll translate into the pen, and I can get some shit written, and you know, but you, but you know how that go with me, unfortunately. 
but it, but you know, it, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. We grow by leaps and bounds, and sometimes we crawl. We got to crawl before we actually take that leap. Right. You know? So I mean, it, it it it's a it's a journey. It's all a journey. Yes. So, yes, I'm taking how, it baby steps. You, yeah. However you get to your goals, that's 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 how you got to get to it. Right. But you know what? I wasn't ready for. I was not ready for this damn weather. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's been like this since I was like maybe a little kid. Like honestly, I don't remember it being this cold in a long, long, long time. Yeah, you know, I was thinking something similar. Yeah, because like you know, we we're we're experiencing like below below zero, like a decent amount of below zero temperatures as well. Um, but I don't remember I don't remember too much of this happening, you know, throughout my my mm-hmm. life as an mm-hmm. especially as an adult. I remember yeah. there was one time I had a, when I had my apartment on a East Harry, um, we had below, we had zero below temperatures, but like, it, it was like a huge ice storm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, I don't know if you remember that, but it I was do. a huge ice storm. It shut the city down for like two yeah. weeks. Yeah, I do. Our, luckily we were blessed enough to get a hotel room and they had, they shit like the um, electric going and, and you know, toasted heat, so we were able to, me and my parents were able to escape to that, but still, I remember that, that shit was, that was a scary time, I, we didn't know what the yeah. fuck was going to happen, like, yeah, just most definitely. insane, so it, this kind of reminds me of a version of that, you know, just how cold it is, and you can't be outside for five fucking minutes, or you'll get frostbite, and wow. this shit is crazy, and like, you know, it's, it's funny, because we got through December and I was like, okay, another winter down. Ain't going to be that bad. We good to go. Blue, blue. And then God was like, boop, here you go. <laughs> Here's a week full of bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, it, and then I don't know if you read um, on the news, they said they're going to start doing um, blackouts for us um, in Wichita. Um, they're going to shut, they're going to shut the power off for 30 to 60 minutes. Um, intermittently so every few every I guess every few hours to conserve energy I think that's some bullshit personally because I pay my yeah. electric bill. <laughs> I pay my electric bill and it should be on whatever I want it on I'm just saying unless there's an actual outage why are you turning off my electricity right in the middle of zero degree weather yeah on top of it all like people is out here cold like why would you turn yeah. it off yeah, I was reading an article today in um, from Evergy, which is the name of the, um, the new company. Yeah, yeah, the new company, and they were saying, yeah, we're gonna have to turn your power off for thirty to sixty minutes every now and then to conserve energy. That's what the article basically said. I'm like, what? What are we conserving energy for, though? That's what apparently I because you know we rely. This is nerd shit again. We rely on like wind turbines to keep the um, the electricity going. And okay. when the weather is really bad and it freezes, it's hard for the wind turbines to do what they're supposed to do. So to conserve the little bit of energy we have during this time, they feel the need to turn off our power. I just don't like that. I don't like that either. That's that's, bad as <laughs> that's like especially cold. during the cold. Like, so I'm supposed to just scr- bundle up for um, an hour because y'all feel like y'all need to conserve my energy. Do I have a say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I have a say if, if the electric goes on and off in my house? I don't know, but it's a mess. It's yeah, a mess. that's that's wild. That's wild. It is. I better leave that shit on with zero degree weather and hope that the wind turbines keep up. I know they got some kind of backup plan for, for the wind turbines. Okay. Shit. Somebody said, um, y'all act like electricity just came out. <laughs> like we been like y'all should have already had this type of plan like a backup plan in motion prior to this happening like i don't get it exactly i'm I'm sick of the bullshit but are you ready to get into the bullshit today you know there's some bullshit that i have to talk about hey yo i'm all for the shenanigans i'm all for the shenanigans i love it i know you always down bro you always down for my shit i'm I'm here for it i'm here for it (laughs) So I guess we'll give an update on Miss Tessica Brown, aka Gorilla Glue Dummy, um, that we <laughs> talked about last week. <laughs> good luck, good luck. We talked. If you missed our episode last week, which why the hell are you missing our episodes anyway? Um, we talked about a young lady named, well, not young, an older woman named Tessica. <laughs> okay, okay, let me calm down. I'm tripping. I'm calm. I'm I'm, I'm wild. <laughs> All right. So we talked about a woman named Tessica Brown. Um, she was um, coined the, the, the name Gorilla Glue Girl. 
because right. she decided to put Gorilla Glue instead of Gorilla Snot Gel in her hair and couldn't get her hair, um, I guess, out of the style for 30 days. And she tried everything. She washed her hair. She said she put arsenic in her hair, which, girl, where you where can you just find arsenic on the street? Anyway. Right. <laughs> so the update is she ended up going to L.A. Um, to get surgery um, to remove the Gorilla Glue from her hair. Um, a African um, doctor, plastic surgeon, <laughs> Um, decided to he who has a chemistry um, a background in chemistry came up with some sort of antidote to get the gorilla glue out and it worked and home grows back to normal. Um, also, while this happened, her GoFundMe um, grossed twenty thousand dollars. What? <laughs> Apparently, $20,000. $20, Apparently, this was for um, travel expenses and medical bills, is what she said. Um, I just want to point out that her surgery was done for free. Um, the doctor did not charge her. So, mm -hmm. man, where's this? And she was flown out for free because mm -hmm. she wanted to the service. So, man, where's this travel expenses and medical bills and all that? You went to the ER, but you, that's going to be like, what, a hundred something dollars, maybe? Like, girl, it's not $20,000, however much it is. It's not $20,000. So people was, ripping shit, her, people was ripping her to shreds for that. And then she ended up deciding to donate to the $20 charity. So I guess social media bullied her out of $20,000. Now, my question for you is, should she have kept the money for herself? Why or why not? And I'll give you my answer when you're done. I mean... Uh I mean, I guess the truth is, is it was donated to her. Um, so at a at a certain point, it's like she she could do whatever she wanted with it, if right. as long as it's donated to her. Yes. But at the same time, if she got flown out and all of that, all, all of the stuff that that got the goo, the the gorilla glue out of her hair, was done for free. If all of that was done for free. <sighs> I, I'm kind of glad that she did donate it oh, to, yeah. to, to charities and whatnot. So, but it's like, yo, um, why the hell did you put Gorilla Glue in your hair in the first place and then let it sit for 30 days before saying something to somebody? It's like, you kind of put yourself in that position, ma. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's, it's kind of stupid. She did. And then she got upset. I guess she started, called herself cussing out social media. Because why would I do something like this for clout? Uh, I was looking to seek help by posting my video. I was not trying after to after 30 days. <laughs> right. <laughs> to be honest, after the first day of me not being able to get that out of my hair, I'm gonna try to figure something out. Right. I'm not gonna listen right. that sit on my hair for 30 days. I feel like that would just I'm I'm extra dramatic, so I feel like that would like go into my scalp and give me brain tumors or some shit. Like I don't have time. Hey. For that. You never know. It might. It might have did that. It might have soaked <laughs> into her scalp and her, I'm saying, her, her pores and shit. I'm saying you got to be careful with that type of stuff. Any, but yeah. So that's an update on that. She got her surgery. Um, her hair. They even. I'm shocked she even had hair left. He. The hair <laughs> didn't come out at all. You know. And she's good to go. And she donated her little her little pot she got to charity, which is good. You know, we always <laughs> want to donate to charity, but. You know, I'm going to be honest, like, I don't know, Aaron, I might have kept it for myself because that bitch is broke. I'm just saying. I mean, you know. I but see, but see, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. You're not, you're not dumb enough to, to spray Gorilla Glue on your scalp. No. no. <laughs> it's like, you might, no. you might need it if you... You, <laughs> you right. might need it if you, if you had that, if you actually did that. You might, I don't know, but she... She she should have she should have done that shit. She really should have. I mean, for her to be as old as she is, <sighs> common sense says if this stuff is holding wood, paper, <laughs> you know, all kinds of other stuff in a in a very <laughs> industrial type bond, you know. Um <sighs> This just sounds ridiculous. Probably, it does. It does. It even feels ridiculous trying to explain this shit. It's like, this is glue. 
this is not this is not hair product. This is it's not. Food. It's it's just not. And it's just like, man, why did you even do that? Right. right. So now then, the, it, it was totally it totally looks like it was for clout and all of that good jazz. It does. So. It does. And so I, I think I asked this on the last part of them, but I'm asking again just in case your answer has changed. Does this woman have a lawsuit? <laughs> I don't think so, but if she gets the right lawyers, if if she donated that twenty thousand to a couple of different lawyers that can find her a loophole, she might have a case. You know what's funny? I know some lawyers that are thirsty that will probably take that case for free. Yeah, just to get some more clout on their name. See, it's just clout for clout for clout. But yeah. um, but yeah, no, I. <sighs> it's just. I walk like, girl, why are you trying to sue? You the one that did the dumb shit, but you know. Right. <laughs> what, what, what can we say? What can we say? To right. piggyback off of that, um, I did see that there's also, there has been a Gorilla Glue challenge that has yeah. started. Um, I'm going to read you a story about, unfortunately, a, a black, black king that decided to do this challenge. Um, and I'm going to read you his experience. So, One man has convinced himself that the Gorilla Glue saga was not real and that he decided to try it himself. The man used Gorilla Glue on his lips and thought he could simply lick it off. However, that was definitely not the case. Right. I want to say this this man's name. Lynn Martin glued a paper cup to his lips to prove that the heavy-duty Gorilla Glue that Tessica Brown used on her hair was not as sticky as she made it seem. Uh-huh. He, he thought she was just playing around, is what he said, and didn't think it was that serious. Unfortunately, he found out the hard way just how sticky Gorilla Glue actually is. Martin is now warning others not to use it on their bodies after doctors had to graft off a part of his upper lip <sighs> to remove the cup. I was trying to show people that it wasn't that serious and that as Tessica was making it out to be, you know, I thought I could lick it off kind of and moisten it and pull it right off, but that didn't work. It went backwards. You know, that's what he said to a local news. He said that he described it, the procedure as a painful peeling to remove the cup. He will need to keep the area covered up for three weeks. And if his lips don't heal, he could face surgery. Um, so that that is what what's what the update what that is. That's hilarious. <laughs> I was like, why, why, why? It seemed it seemed like dumbassness is contagious. <laughs> it is. You know, I think it's dumbassness, and I think it's clout. I think clout is contagious. <clears throat> that too. That too. And like, why would you even try this? Like, am I the only? Are we the only ones that like know how great Gorilla Glue actually is? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> why doesn't nobody else know this? I look. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you. I, look, I just know if I decide to to do some stuff like that, y'all just need to take me behind somebody's building and shoot me in the head. <laughs> cause... Because I mean, and it's not listen. gonna turn out. It's not gonna turn out good, you know. I like, it's hey, not. I, I'm not the. I'm not the best looking of guys, but if I decide to, to glue my hand to my head like that, it's gonna be stuck there for a little. Especially if I use gorilla glue, you know. I'm gonna be yeah. walking around looking like a, a broke Q dog, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and then, no. and do some wild stuff. Hey, shout out to the Q dogs because they ain't glued shit up there yet. <laughs> right, know? right. No. But real talk, like, like that's that's it's stupid. It's so stupid. And the fact that it became a trend, the fact that it became a trend. Because I mean, I you know I posted I posted some stuff uh, last week uh, in my story where a girl tried to do it to her nether regions. What? To, I, I guess she tried to yeah she tried to tape her nether regions up. And, and do the waxing, and she used she used the tape though the glue tape. Oh my so, goodness! So you know that if this any kind of indication with uh, the the girl who did it on her hair, it's like if you take the tape, the tape oh is God. still got glue on it. It's what still got glue that? on it. So when you get down there and you try to rip that bad boy off, oh yeah, you ripping 
every bit of your vagina out. You know, what in the, lips, the world? The, right, the lips, the clit, everything. You, it's like you ripping it off, all of it. So, like, she was in the video. She was sitting there. She had her hand over her face, and she was, she was crying. You know that sniffling that you would do, like if you got a whooping, yes. and uh, like it was, it was a good whooping, and you couldn't hardly catch your breath. That, that's what she was doing. <laughs> she was all in the corner, and somebody was trying to pour warm water, warm soapy water down on her nether regions. It was like, look, that's that, that's your fault. You decided to put that glue tape down there. That's your fault. Man. Maybe you shouldn't have a vagina anyway. <laughs> you know something because it's like why are, why are people doing stupid things? That's yeah. why I don't understand why are people trying to do stupid things. Yeah. Oh, like it's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy out here. I, it's wild that it even became a trend. It is wild to me that it did. I, like I said, I think that a lot of people want to be copycats because oh girl got so much cloud and so much news coverage why are we reporting why is, why am i seeing kwch post a story about this girl on their facebook page why why, See, why, that's, are, we, that's why are we having a conversation about this but e- in either case guys do not use your really glue other than what for, it's intended for okay right uh, to you, bond two pieces of wood and hold them tight exactly please please stop please stop you know what this reminds me of, though? What? This reminds me of that goddamn Kylie Jenner lip challenge. Oh my god! When she god. went, when Kylie Jenner, when Kylie Jenner went and got her lips surgically enhanced, mm-hmm. she got the whole bee sting thing. Folks was like, "Oh my god, I gotta get lips like Kylie Jenner!" Oh <laughs> and they went and got their parents' shot glasses and started sucking on the on the shot glass well they didn't know that they were bruising their lips and that's why their lips were swelling up like that and they also didn't know that that's not what kylie jenner did not at all that's so not what kylie jenner did no so you had you had 50 billion kids uh or fifty thousand kids running around with bruised mouths looking like they got they got sucked in the face with a with a vacuum cleaner and they were all bruised and shit. And some of them, some of them, sucked on the gla- on the the shot glass hard enough to 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 break the shot glass. So they ended up with glass and shit in their lips. It was like yeah. I was seeing grown ass men do that shit. It was like grown ass white men, black men, Asian men. Like they, why right. was y'all doing that shit? Right. It's like did y'all not think that that you know, glass was going to be in your face? Right. It's like, did y'all not think that y'all was gonna hurt your lips and it was gonna be bruised and whatnot? It was like, that shit, that shit was wild. I was See, like, why, was is Kylie, why is Kylie Jenner the one to follow on that whole thing when she went to a doctor? Listen, you know what's funny about the whole Jenner Kardashian plan? Like, they really, they, they were, they were, they're what you call super influencers. You know, right. you, so everybody is gonna follow what they do, which is sad. Like, nobody has their own fucking brain these days. Right. You know, that's just what we're dealing with. Um, so, uh, <laughs> did you see that your boy, Justin Timberlake, apologized after 17 years um, to Janet Jackson and Britney Spears? Wait, well, okay, I, I guess I don't get why he would apologize to Britney. I, I understand why he would apologize to Janet. For, for popping her whole areola out with the with the 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 nipple ring in it that was the yes. sun and some other shit. Yeah, we yes. remember that, Justin. We remember that. My some of problem. us high fives you because of it. Right when it happened, you know, it was I was I was pretty young and it was it was a big thing. Like it was a big thing. And my thing is like, why are we apologizing seventeen years later? Why didn't you apologize in the moment? Right. Like, like why I, did- I thought he would have. I thought he would have apologized that night that he. Popped her, her titty out. He should have, but apparently he just didn't. But I was talking to Maurice about this, and he was like, "Well, you know, he was 23 at the time." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, he was really young, but it's just like, I don't know. I feel like I would just have the world with all the 23 year old, years old to know if I fucked up to apologize." Yeah. Well, like, like this is this is one of the biggest stars on the planet. You know, it's like you do something like that. I would think that even if he didn't apologize right there in the moment, that at some point in time within that week, 
he can get Janet on the phone or at least send a message to her to be like, hey, yo, Janet, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pop your, na- your, your nipple out on national TV. Right. Uh, at the Super Bowl. Like, I, I didn't mean to do that shit. I agree. You would think that- Go ahead. I was going to say, you would think that he would do something like that, you know? But I guess yeah, he did like until she, now. She went through a lot. Like, right after that happened, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, like trying to ban her from different things. They were trying to cancel her at the time. And wasn't that, wasn't that right after Michael died? I want to, no, 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 no. Michael died in 2009, and now this was in 2004. Oh, okay. So, okay, it was before then. Okay. Okay, well, what was up with Britney then? Why did he re- why did he uh, apologize to Britney? Was it because of the Cry Me River shit? Apparently, he felt like he just, he, um, I'm reading this now. He says, I specifically want to apologize to Britney Spears and Janet Jackson, both individually, because I care for and respect these women, and I know I failed them. I understand I fell short in these moments and in and many other ways benefited from a system that condones misogyny and racism. Um... Yes, he is apologizing for the Crimea River thing, um, where he implied that he took her virginity and all this stuff, um, and that she, in, in which he also implied that she cheated in the relationship. So basically, she dumped, he dumped like all this stuff on her, and I guess she went through a hard time with that, just in the public and media. He said that because of my ignorance, I didn't recognize it for what it was at the time, um, happening in my own life. Um, Yes. So that's what that that's the short version of what 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 was said. He, he okay, did a much so longer she, post, but that was the, that's the basis of what he was saying. Did she? Okay. So did were they not in a relationship at all, or no? They were dating. They they had dated, and he felt <laughs> like um, in the media he used his um, I guess um, male machismo to make her look bad and like talk really like down on her and like was talking about how she cheated and how she did this and just that and I mean in my I don't know it's never she's never she's never commented on it he's been the only person to speak on it so in my opinion I feel like that's a yes because if you didn't if someone was putting out something false about you wouldn't you want to come out and refute it but she never did hmm See, I, and, and that's the way I kind of looked at it back then too. Was like, all right, well, he did this. She cheated on him, and from what from what I understood, and maybe I got this, maybe I got this from because it was from uh, uh, what's her face who was married to Kevin Federline. Mm-hmm. Uh, Char Jackson. What was her name? Yeah, Char Jackson. Mm-hmm. Um, Char Jackson was the one that actually put the shit out there that um, that uh, Brittany was cheating on Justin with Kevin. Yes. While they was on tour. Which I think that actually and, did happen. Uh, right. And it's like if 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 Shar Jackson is the one who was married to Kevin while all of that was happening and was going through her shit. Yeah. I don't know. It just kind of it just kind of seemed like it all kind of fit together. But we could be totally wrong. We could, we, we could but be I mean totally wrong. my problem with this apology is that I don't like the message that it sends as, as far as the Britney portion of it. The Janet Jackson, right. it, it was definitely necessary and needed for you to apologize a long time ago. But the Britney portion, I don't like because like on one hand, I understand why you're doing that. Yes, it was, I mean, I don't even know, like does, does Beyonce have to apologize to Jay-Z about putting Lemonade out? Like, you know what I'm mean, saying? It's a slippery fucking slope. You know what I mean? It's a slippery slope. Yeah. Like, because you talk about, you know, your experience with someone in a song, and does, I don't even think he said her name. Did he say her even know her name in that song? Um, uh, Britney's name? Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think he did, but the girl, the girl that was in the video definitely looked, looked like, like her. her. Yeah. <laughs> definitely looked okay, like her. So. But don't, don't get me wrong, though, like that. That cry me a river was dope. I, and maybe it was just dope because it was Timberland and yeah. Uh, you know, that's who he was working with at the time. So I I don't know. It, it was, I love I, I love, love the song. song. I like the song. I just yeah, I rock out I'm to a, it too. I don't as far as maybe he can apologize for like I guess what he put her through, but I mean as far as putting it in your art, like as an artist, I just I don't know. I have a problem with the fact that he felt the need to apologize about putting that in his art. It's just like 
I don't know, it's a slippery slope. What do you think about that? Like, if you were to talk about an ex in a song and you were like to not name her, but in, make a lot of insinuations where people can put it together, is that something that you feel like you would need to apologize for? Well, here's the thing, me being me being a guy who has been on the artist side of things, I mean, um, no, I wouldn't apologize for for putting that stuff in there, especially if I didn't say the, the person's name, because I've done that before. I've been hurt uh, in a relationship, but I put that I put that that information in in a song, and you know that heartbreak, that heartbreak and heartache and everything, it led to great creativity. Right. You know, it's like so. For me to take the heartache and turn it into create, you know, be creative with it and turn it into this song over here or this painting over here or whatever uh, uh, came out of the creative outlet, you know, um, that's all. That's all me changing that into a positive. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I, where I could be over here binge drinking or you know mm -hmm. doing whatever drugs or whatever i changed that and put it over here and uh, i still didn't say the person's name so right. i don't know i guess to me as an artist apologizing for the creativity me me taking life and changing it into art i i don't see the need to, to apologize for that um but as and now, if I if I did some shit like uh, like Tupac did, that's why I fucked your wife and fat motherfucker yeah. and did the hit him up shit. Yeah, that that might have had had Tupac been around up until now. Yeah, Pac probably would have would have apologized for that. But like, hey, bro, uh, you know what? Sorry about that shit. We hit him up, you know. <laughs> but as far as as far as as far as you know, being creative and you know. Not necessarily saying the person's name, but talking about the shit from my angle out. I don't think I don't think uh, or, or I'm sorry, talking about the, the shit from the artist angle out. I don't think there, there's need for an apology. I mean, what whatever happened, happened. And none of us actually know for sure. Yeah. None of the consumers actually know for sure what actually happened. It's just that, you know, we see the art for what it is. It's a bop. We all think what we think the people involved never actually really do anything else. So. Right, right. I don't know. I, mean, I, like, I hope Brittany all right, though. <laughs> well, well, well. Brittany has been going through it. Um, apparently, there was a new documentary that came out, and not to mention she's going through, she had went through a case, because I, I don't, I'm sure we've talked about this before, but her father has was awarded um, conservatorship over all of her estate. So she can't make any and this happened when she had her breakdown in 2007 when she shaved her head and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. This happened way back then because she was, um, they said she couldn't um, make informed decisions about her finances because she was not right in the head. Mind you, it's been 13 years since that happened or something like that. Yeah. Um, and he still had had control. Like she couldn't buy a soda without asking, can I have $20 in my account? Like that type of control. Okay. And, Mayu Brittany's like 40 something. Yeah. Like yeah. 40 something. Um, so imagine having to ask your mom or a parent, hey, I need $20 in, into my account to go buy a, a, some dinner at your age. Like, I can't even imagine, not to mention, she worked hard as shit for her money. She was like, that girl was a workhorse. If you remember her about her career back then, she was putting out music all the time, going on yeah. tour, world tours all the time, basically the typical artist um and performing at award shows all types of stuff so she was making a lot of money and she was working really hard and to have someone a parent to not be able to touch that money it's just insane to me at, at her age at shit at my age if I had to have my hand pick amount of money for me to be able to use like no but recently they had went to court for her to win that back and she actually did win so I'm very happy for her she got her <laughs> her rights back to her money and she's able to be a, a, a real adult. So. She's 39 years old. Yeah, I thought so. I wanted to say she was around 40. Like, I know she got yeah. started when she was really young, but yeah, about 40 sounds about right. Um, it says she was married to Kevin Federline 2004 to 2007, Jason Alexander 2004 to 2004. Uh, so I guess that was before Kevin. So mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I know she's with somebody now. I don't know who it is, but I think he's like he's kind of. I think he's a known. I don't think he's like a known person. Yeah, and I know she. I her she has her two kids that she had with Kevin, and like yeah. you really need to call him K Fed. That shit. Them that that <laughs> whole that whole era was just funny to me. Just when he was yeah. like a thing, when he was a thing, it was just, it was funny. Um, well, shoot, and then the and then the fact that uh, what was it the um. It was some sketch that it was some sketch comedy thing that 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 led into uh getting getting federlined being a, a, a an actual <laughs> thing, you know. Yes, I think what I was it? He got exactly child support, him. right? Yeah, 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 he got child support, and so Brittany had to pay child support and yes. shit. Yeah. And he was he was like he came he got he got he became like this chunky dude like he's this yes. all buff dancer at one point mm-hmm. and then he becomes this chunky dude <laughs> yeah because all you gotta do is sit at home and eat bonbons and get his child support check so he chilling yeah <laughs> but yeah that's what it was he it was getting better line yeah that shit that shit crazy that that's hilarious um you see your girl um april jones is out here riding with the legends literally or riding on the mm-hmm. legends she in the streets. She in the streets, okay. Um, so there a while back, you know, Dr. Dre has been going back and forth with his um, ex-wife about. I feel like they in the news every other day about her wanting more money or her claiming he had a mistress, her doing this, her doing that. She is just not at peace and she is not well. It seems like like she wants to cause havoc in his life from making him sign some divorce papers while he was in the hospital recovering from an aneurysm, like. She's just an interesting lady. So she a while back, she had claimed that um, he had a mistress. And there was a um, cheating clause, apparently, in their, um, I guess, pre- prenup that they had. Um, and she wanted to prove this mistress that was there and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, you know, because TMZ, the feds, they, he, Dr. Dre was out for a dinner. And he gets out of the limo. And then the next young lady that gets out of the limo is none other than April Jones. For all you guys who don't know April, who April Jones is, she um, is Omarion from B2K. And Omarion within himself, because he's just all entity now. Um, he is, she is his um, child's mother, children's mother or whatever. Then she went on to date, um, that we know of, by the way. I'm sure there's been other people between that and that. She wants to date um, his group member, Little Fizz, um, and or Dre, Fizzo, whatever the fuck y'all want to call him now. Um, Fizzle Pop. Oh, Fizzle Pop. <laughs> and, and apparently she was in the news. I mean, she's just, she just is like, how do we put it this way? She's a proud hoe, which is fine. Enjoy your life. You know what I'm saying? That there's nothing wrong with being proud of doing what you love. Okay. If you love splitting the dick, like a, if you love sitting on the dick like a banana split. Who am I to judge? Okay. Do you? <laughs> who are me to judge? <laughs> who am I to judge? Okay. But I just think that after all of that, it's just funny to see that she is the actual alleged mistress of Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, that's I feel like that's so random for her to be even involved with that man, but what yeah. do you I, I think that's crazy. First off, first off, the who are me to judge? I got to give a shout out to Hater Maker Juno. That's that's my <laughs> dude right there. <laughs> He's funny as hell. Funny as hell. But <laughs> like, yo, to, to, to April Jones, like, so, okay. So you're saying that April Jones is messing around with Dr. Dre? Yes. That shit crazy. Isn't That's it? That's just so, it's, it's so crazy. Isn't but, it? I mean, she out here in these streets like that, she out here in these streets. I guess <laughs> I mean, so. Like, like, I don't know, is she, is she the next one that's going to try to get child support or, or alimony from, from Dr. Hope, J? Cause, I, I would hope not. That would be real bad. I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure she didn't get shit from Omarion because they wasn't married. No, I don't think but, she got anything from him. I don't think so, yeah. but I'm not. But you know what? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, we, I guess we don't. We don't know for we sure. Know. But, but yeah, but I'm I just, saying, I, you know, like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Omarion, you know, what you saying that he was his uh, his own entity now? 
Um, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. That man, he done bossed up big time. Man. <laughs> I bet you, I bet you, she's willing. I, I bet you, she was wishing that she had gotten back. My man sitting up talking about ice box, ice box. Hey, but he be doing it though. He do, but real she playing. Go ahead. Real, well, I was gonna say real talk. His 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 latest album, The Connection, was actually pretty dope. Oh, if you ain't check it out, like, you know, like check that shit out. It's actually pretty cool. I I didn't expect what he got going on right now, mm-hmm. but yo, like it it was it was cool. It's I'm real cool. It. And I'm like, it's still it's still very much Omarion, but at the same time, like it's a more grown up version of Omarion. Like not not so much as in like um physically grown up, but like yo, know, he, he you can see his maturity. And, and his music, so I'm it's, it's, it's really dope, though. Like, you get a chance to check that out. Check it out. I'm definitely gonna check that out. Um, but yeah, no, I just it, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So she was trying. She okay. So she did this a re a recent um not recent. She did a stand on Hollywood Unlocked. She was um the fill in co host for Melissa Ford that was over there. And oh yeah. When, yeah, and when she was on there. Um, she was speaking about Omarion and his how his penis is uncircumcised and how his dick stank and we're just talking to like all types of stuff about how uh, horrible of a human being that he kind of is. And wow. it's just like, girl, like, I don't know what it is. She just rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. It has nothing to do with, you know, her <clears throat> overt because she lives at the end of the day. The girl's beautiful. I would never say she's ugly. She's gorgeous. It's just like, I don't know. She's just be doing stuff. So I'm just like, like, why? 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 <laughs> you know, but what the fuck do I know? So, was there anything you wanted to bring to the pod today, A. Sean McGraw from the top? Uh, I, actually, you brought it before I did. It was more so. It was more of the 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 gorilla glue stuff. Yeah, just how it's become a trend. You know, <sighs> what's wrong? That's with the you? only thing. That that's that's the only thing I was gonna bring to it. But I I'll I'm, go. There is one more thing I wanted to talk about and get into. Um, I sent this to you earlier. So I was perusing the Twitter streets. And (laughs) I was perusing the Twitter streets. And upon my perusing, I found a tweet that rubbed me and triggered me quite much. The tweet said, nah, I'm tired. How how could my manager at work pull my wig off my head? These people are sick. I'm tired of the way they treat their black staff. What the fuck? I'm like, manager, wig off the head? Oh, like, something's not computing. Not computing. Right. So when I further did more research, she said that um, I usually have braids or my natural hair out. I don't wear wigs unless I'm going out. He kept asking me if I was wearing a wig, and I said yes. He was joking and said he'd pull it off because I didn't glue it down. Half an hour later, he pl- ended up pulling it off. Um, prior to this, he kept making comments like wiggy wiggy and referring to me as wig and making jokes and asking if I'm bald, making comments like this is why um, he said comments like this is why only black women wear wigs and, and things like this. Well, first off, he's an asshole because not only black women wear wigs. At all. At, at all. It's definitely a multiracial, multi everything. Everybody wear wigs, okay? Yeah. It's not just a black thing, first and foremost. Look, and then most, what I've been seeing here lately is that the men have been getting wigs. I just sent you a thing. I think I think I sent you something the other day about a brother getting some a dread wig and like yeah. have, you know what I mean? Like it's it's not just a black thing at all. No, not at all. Um, I seen a, I seen a guy who uh, he was a at a certain point in time in life he was a he was a uh, he had hair of course but like he, he was he's a redhead yeah uh, a ginger if you will yeah um, and he was completely bald and he had the beard he had the beard he got the beard shaped up right mm-hmm. but then he got on he got the 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 wig put on too that kind of made him look like one of those lumberjack and it was it was only on the, the very top part and it was shaved around here and he he showed a picture of a guy that I actually follow um, on Instagram uh, and he wanted to look like that guy and mm-hmm. the barbershop or the, the the salon or wherever he was uh, they was like oh okay no problem they got a thumbs up and was like they put all of that on there and like, like they glued it down and you know he had this big long flowing 
pseudo ginger man, if you will. So I don't like see no problem. Like everybody it. gets them. Everybody gets them. It is. And I mean, this leads to a bigger topic that triggers me a lot because as a black woman, um, throughout my entire life, I'm talking about not just when I was an adult, but my entire life when I'd be in spaces with people from different races, they all yeah. they act like my hair is like like I'm a zoo animal almost. Like they come up and try to yeah. touch it. They ask me, is that a weave? They ask me things like I feel like number one, I feel like that question is inappropriate if I don't know you. If Very I much so. just whether you black, white, whatever, if you come up to me and I don't know you and we don't talk or have that type of relationship, don't ask me if my hair is real. Just right. don't. I think it's just rude. I would I my mind doesn't even go there when I meet people. You know right. what I mean? I don't meet somebody and was like, hmm, is your hair real? Like I just <laughs> So there's that. Like I've I've dealt with that my entire life, and it's always made me feel a type of way. And I feel like now that I'm an adult and I'm more, um, I guess I'm more sure and sure of myself and in touch more in touch with my, with my blackness and being a black woman. I feel like yeah. I would probably like try to like beat someone's ass today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Most definitely. <laughs> like in the past, you know, I kind of hee hee hoo hoo hee 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 heated off. But I think now, like, I'd really get upset. Like, I really would yeah. get upset by that. And, you know, and then again, it's the thing of if I get upset, then I'm just an aggressive, angry black woman. It's just, it, be, listen, being a black woman is just hard. Okay. It, Most it's definitely. Hard. It's fucking tough. Okay. Black men, of course, you guys go through what you go through. And we're we not going to discount that on my show, period. But it's just like women, like we just go through so much, like little stuff that, that seems minor can really have an effect on us. And little things like, not, this ain't little to me, but things like people pulling off your wig when you're trying to work, like, excuse me? Yeah. It's horrible. Like, I, unfortunately, I got a story, not about this in particular, but about a homeboy I know. He got um, called the N word um, by his coworker. He goes and calls HR, does a report and all this. HR tells him, well, he said he didn't, and we choose to believe him. What the fuck? So he, because he was a father trying to feed his family, he couldn't quit. Hmm. He had to, he had to make money, he had to make money to go to work, but he at least thought that they would at least fire this, you know, this other person. So now this other person goes around taunting him and it's a whole thing. I told him, I said, you need to get a new job, number one. Because yeah. if your company don't have, if you work for a company night and day, you put in your blood, sweat, and tears, and when you have an issue, they don't have your back, they got to go. Yeah. They gotta go. In my opinion, you got to yeah. find something else, find something better, but you know what? I feel like that's also my pri- privilege talking because it's not easy to find a job out here, to be honest with you. I mean, and you're right. You're right. Um, I, I was going to, I was going to add to this, uh, I was going to add to this that at a certain point um, and you and I have kind of talked about this off and on for like the past, I don't know how many years, Mm -hmm. but at a certain point, you know, you get to, you get to, you get to that type of, uh, you approach a wall with that type of, that type of uh, environment at work. You know, you approach a wall where it's like, all right, where else am I going to go? What else am I going to do? And if you, if you get to feeling stagnant and whatnot, like it's, it, that, that leads to depression and a bunch yeah. of other crap yeah. that you, that you, that we really don't need to go through as people, and especially, especially as black people, but people in general. <clears throat> so with shit like that happening, I would say, I would say, now mind you, I don't have all the answers for this, but I would say, do do as much education as much research as you can not necessarily it don't necessarily have to be going to school or taking a class but at the same time it can totally be going to school and taking a class Mm -hmm. and figuring out figuring out how to work for yourself because if these people ain't going ain't going to go up to bat for you at your job then you don't need to be there we as people don't need to be in positions like that that are causing stress so much stress that it affects our lives for years to come yeah you know so we don't we don't need that uh get that get that 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 re- do that research get that little bit of uh knowledge that you need to to possibly work for yourself and work from home or or you know start your own business or whatever but uh sitting there and 
you know, enduring that for years and years to come, that's, that's, that's a horrible thing. Yeah, it's not healthy at all. It's a horrible thing to, to have to deal with. So I was, I would just say, hey, you know, and do it now while you got the, while you got the confidence to do it. You know, and and even if it's just starting with the research and baby stepping it up, baby step it up. But don't don't just sit there and and endure that. Hell, uh, uh, do the research and get the education to go on the on the law side of it Mm -hmm. and do it that way. You can take that shit to court, you know, and and do that shit yourself. Exactly. Um, Because like it's. It, it, it's horrible how companies how companies treat black folk and how companies treat different people uh, of color. So like it's it is, and uh, you know, like the generation I was talking to Maurice about this the other day. The generation before us, what they did, they'd work a job for 35, 50 to fifty years, doing the same job, working at a factory, doing whatever they're doing, being miserable as shit. And, yeah. you know, just said, you know, I got put food on the table, I got a provider, I do this. I feel like mm-hmm. our generation is a generation that says, no, we're valuing our mental health this time around. So yeah. we're not going to put ourselves to the same bullshit that y'all did. You know what I mean? Just to yeah. have a job, just to put food on the table. Like, if, if it's if it's fucking with my mental, I can't do it. Like, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Like, and, and you know, you get to a place because, I'm not going to say this on air, but I'll tell you off air. You get to a place where you get very complacent, you get very comfortable, you get yes. you get used to how you're being treated, what's being said to you um, in the workplace. You get used to it at a point, but then there's yeah. always, there's, there's going to be that point because your spirit does not align with wherever you're at. It's going to be a point where your spirit is like, listen. You content, you comfortable, but let me do this right here. Let this person say this to you. Let this person treat you that way so that you kind of realize, yeah, I'm content, but I know I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. And I know that we got, we split off to something else, but the truth of the matter is you need to go where your spirit wants you to go and you need to follow you. Yeah. And like I said, something that may seem okay, I can handle it. I'm cool. I'm complacent. I'm this and that. Something is always going that that it's like a scratch. Something is always going to be scratching at you and being like, okay, you complacent, but I don't. This is not where you need to be. And I feel, and I want to encourage our listeners and people that are watching us as well that to follow that little voice in your head when you know something ain't right, when you know you don't feel right in a situation, follow that voice because it's not yeah. going to lead you astray. It's not going to lead you astray because it's, yeah. you, it's really what you really want. But you're, you're, you're stuffing it down with, oh, I got to have a job. I got to pay these bills. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yes. While that all is very true, you need to set yourself up for success financially and mentally. If you yeah. can marry the two, you golden. But until you do that, you always want to have that itch you can't scratch. Right. Uh, and to piggyback off of that, there is nothing wrong with starting over. No, there's nothing wrong with starting over at all, at all. I mean, I like I was I was talking to I was talking to certain somebody um, just a couple of days ago, I believe, and they were talking about they wouldn't know what to do if they started over, and it was like, yo, you're not even thirty yet. Mm. It's like, uh, so you got plenty of time to to start over and do something for a number of years and then start over again if you really want to so yeah it's, it's just one of those things it's just like starting over is not necessarily a bad thing mm-hmm. yeah you got to refigure out you got to reconfigure your life and re, you know just kind of redo some things mm-hmm. but like the whole point of that is uh, uh the whole point of that restructure is to learn what you can do mm-hmm. and and take a different avenue you know learn how to take a different road and learn learn different things that come with that you know taking that that avenue that road um it's all going to be it's all going to be something different you know the comfort zone the comfort zone is not meant for us to live in no you know it's like you got to get uncomfortable to actually figure out what exactly you can do Absolutely. And I yeah. think you have to be open to hearing that voice that tells you, yeah. don't go here, go here. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to be open to that. And that takes time. And like you said, starting over there is nothing wrong with starting over. In fact, I feel like starting over is an advantage 
because yes. you already went down the road before. You know what road where that takes you. So you know yeah. not to make the same mistakes again. And exactly. I, and I feel like at any age, starting over is fine. Yeah. If, as long as you have a breath of life within you, you got unlimited chances to start over and to, to start fresh and to go down the right path and the right road or the road that's right for you. Let me say. Yes. So I think there's no better way to end than right there. Um, I will ask you, Aaron, do you got any shout outs this week? Anything anybody you um, want to us up to? Uh, yeah, shout out to, uh, shout out to Bird, um, Dad Loves Your Baby Girl, um, shout out to, shout out to Baby Ruth, aka Ruth Vanova out at Primetown Barbershop, um, I'm gonna try to go see her, I'm gonna try to go see her this, at the end of this week, um, shout out to Keon Ross and Urban House Clothing, my man still out there doing his damn thing, in this zero degree weather, like, shout out to you, sir, um, and I already gave a shout out to, uh, hey, to make a Juno just for the fact that I I use this who are me to judge. <laughs> if y'all don't know what that is, if y'all don't know what that is, check that man's videos out. No, I'm not getting paid for that shout out, but that man funny. He funny. I'll, put, it, I'll put his link in the description so people can go see what we're talking about. All right, all right, cool. Um, shout out, shout out to my grandparents. Uh, they still they still kicking, boy. They they still kicking. I, I I need to go I need to go see about them because you know it's been cold and shit, but uh, I, hopefully they're doing they're doing all right. I haven't seen them in about a week or so, so uh, shout out to them and shout out to shout out to our YouTube listeners uh, or viewers. I'm sorry, shout out to our YouTube viewers and uh, shout out to our TikTok viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all are showing us what's up, you know. It's like y'all are yes. y'all are representing us to the fullest, and we appreciate it. We really do. We really do. Um, my shouts are always short, so I'm gonna shout out Sammy. I'm always thinking of you, bro. I know you're going through a Say. lot. Thinking of you, appreciate all your support and your love. Um, shout out to my girl. I, I have never shouted her out before, but she's been a big supporter of us too. Always liking and resharing things. <gasps> oh Lord, <clears throat> she lives in Atlanta. Her name is Japan, and she. Her name is Japan. Yes. And shout out to you, Japan. Yes, yeah, she's a huge supporter. She's always been a real great um friend of mine online friend so shout out to her um, um real quick sorry to interrupt you, oh, you shout fine. Out. Fine. uh japan if you listening whether you watching or listening uh hit me with the with the the, the friend request on the socials because i'll totally be on there hit me yeah. with the friend request yes yeah, she um what's great about her which i'll plug this because she's just been an awesome person is she's actually on dialysis because she needs a kidney transplant Oh, wow. And yes, and she um, posts her GoFundMe stuff to pay for her um, hospital bills and transplants. And she can't work, so she, pay, she has kids to pay for her bills as well. I'm going to post that in our description if you want to support her. Um, definitely do so. She's a great, beautiful person. And, you know, she's always in my prayers. I hope she finds the kidney she needs, hands down. We, she is a very big supporter of One Cup Podcast, and we support her. So. Um, thank you japan yes absolutely and I, you know i think that's it i think we're gonna end it on that note so it is your girl morgan lexus we ex in the building in this sub zero fucking weather over it hopefully this weekend i get some sun but <laughs> um and i'm exiting in the building it's your boy a shot of funky walker dirty talker none illa than that man scrubzilla grays killing it in a million ways all right y'all we out peace Ah, yeah. <laughs>